welcome into the latest Inside LAFC podcast. I am Max Bretos, the co-host, Beta, Stephen Betasher. How is your week, or how's the start of your week been going, Beta? Start of the week is good. Uh, we had a little bit of snow here in Colorado yesterday, so took my uh, older son sledding at the park around the corner, so off to a good start. Hey, you're retired. You're allowed to ski and snowboard. Is Are you into that? I mean, living I, in Colorado. I'm allowed to now. I, uh, I will be into that for sure. I haven't done it yet. It's only been a couple months since I've been retired, but uh, it's definitely on the plan and, and going to probably do snowboarding because... When I was younger, that's what I did, but I heard skiing might be easier, so we'll see. I don't know. Skiing is easier, and that is why I do it, Okay. because I don't want to fall. Yeah. So I'm a very leisurely skier, but I do enjoy it. Hey, road trip to Colorado, staying at Betas. Woo! Let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> Your place is ready right here. Come on over. Tremendous. We have a great show for you. We will break down LAFC's uh, triumphant 5 settle victory over Nashville. We'll preview the Rapids game next week. We will be joined in uh, very shortly by LAFC midfielder Timothy Tillman, who was able to log one of those five goals in the victory on Saturday night. And it'll just be, we'll have some laughs. We'll have we'll have some tears. Maybe not too many tears. This is a feel-good show. Feel-good show, Beta, as we get into the topics. Very interesting night Saturday. Uh, first of all, wanted to mention Olaf Suplicki, who uh, passed, uh, passed away and a great memorial for him at the stadium. A big part of the supporter culture for LAFC is we had that partnership with Dortmund. A uh, beta, you have the the blanket, yeah. From the let's say yeah. what they handed the Dortmund game. I would love to get one of those European teams to come back again, but uh. yeah, yeah, it's a, a definitely sad news. But uh, but yeah, hopefully uh, the the uh, everything that LSC did for him and everyone appreciates what he did because I think it was a big part of that relationship between LSC and Dortmund. So. Yeah, that was, I mean, just it, you know, the Dortmund part, the, the friendly, and then everything. And LEFC and a big group went to Dortmund to see the games, and Olaf kind of showed them around. Yeah. So his impression very, very well felt. We had, uh, I think, the most talked about story is Ollie. Uh, <laughs> took a, <laughs> we, lost, we lost Ollie for a little bit, but she's back safely. That's good. I'm glad to hear. I was a little worried. Uh, Twitter started going a little, a little crazy about. Ollie flying off. I don't know where she went to, but she just wanted a little vacation, and thankfully she came back. Yes. Have you been a Falcon, or maybe that's something we can arrange here? Beta, I haven't. Maybe we'll... I haven't. I've I talked to Larry and see a few. Uh, you know, fortunately, I was usually in the starting lineup where you're kind of preparing for the match. <laughs> uh, but That'd be a weird because I didn't make the starting eleven. But hey, can you be the Falcon? Right? Oh, that's a... Yeah. But I, there were moments where I didn't dress, whether it was rest or injury or whatever, and I went out to watch. It's actually really cool. So yeah. maybe, maybe one day. I'll tell you, mate, if you came out there, the place the place would go bonkers. They, you are Anyone on the LAFC original, you're going to be able to carry that clout for the rest of your life. Uh, they they will we'll talk about it. We'll have a black and gold rewind, too, that you won't want to miss. We'll look back in the history books to a game that no one will ever forget. Um, had to have a nice shower afterwards. I'll get to all the details here shortly. Let's talk about LAFC's performance. We were expecting them to start finding that rhythm, getting goals. Not only did they do that, their defense was impeccable. The best, perf- I mean, in so many few words, and we've been watching these games, but that is the best we have seen them. And I guess the question is just to keep that going. Yeah, no, they were definitely clinical. I think last time we spoke was uh, after the Kansas City game and, I said it was the most exciting 0-0 game. Uh, there were so many chances, and just it's one of those days you just didn't see the ball go in the net. And uh, this past weekend against Nashville, you saw the ball go multiple times into the back of the net. And that's what you like to see when you put a good performance, not just offensively, but defensively, I thought. Um, LAFC was so good, and I actually think a lot of the chances came from that defensive pressure, um, putting that high line putting Nashville in uncomfortable spots and getting rewarded for that for that defensive pressure. Scoring first goes a long way, but let's talk about that defense because I, I, I when I rewatched the game, I was this is they're squeezing Nashville and they yeah. I mean very few good chances. They had that one was it the uh the penalty that was reviewed, but it was they, it was really nice from Loris and obviously Aaron Long and his just a good group effort. Uh, the fullbacks getting up. We had that one shot from uh, uh, Sergi Palencia that would end up being the penalty call that was yeah. spectacular. But those back four guys and Hugo Loris, uh passing colors, certainly. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know, I, this was one of the games where I don't think Lloris had too many highlight plays, but you could just see his organization within his center backs and his outside backs, and that just trickles forward, right? Um, yeah, the, the penalty, obviously, that got caused, um, just the relentless pressure. I want to say, which goal was it? it? It was actually Tillman's goal. The first goal, the pressure starts by, by them setting that high line, causing a mistake by Nashville, they get a corner. Corner comes in, and then Tillman gets to tap it in, right? So I want to say there was three or four of the five goals that were directly from that defensive pressure, not sitting back in a low block, but that that high block or mid block, putting pressure and being able to attack from there. So I want to give it. Give Aaron Long a little love. His header that set up that essentially set up the Tillman goal. But that was a really, they were very crafty. Five goals, five goals to the good, as we like to say. And that is a big performance for this team. And we look at the volume of goals. It could have been more. I mean, there, I, there was once one hit the crossbar, one hit the post. Yeah. There were, I mean, it, and you're playing against 10 men, obviously, which uh, they had to make the switch to the keeper, which is going to handicap their efforts. But just that offensive barrage, and this could have been a – five's a lot of goals. It's the most they've scored this season. You don't get to score five goals a lot. Yeah. Uh, but this could have been seven or eight. No, it could have been. Uh, obviously, Buonga had a couple chances that hit the post, uh, a couple good saves. And then I think it was Oliveira who had the ball by Buonga in between the back line. And, you know, it's a great save by the keeper flying across his line to, to do whatever he can to get something on it. It definitely could have been – Seven, eight, but I don't think anyone's going to complain about five. It sounds pretty good. No, it does. And the, the guys who scored, you wanted to get Kike a goal. You got it. Yeah. Edward Atuesta roaming around gets a goal, so he yeah. gets the first. Flying uh, header. <laughs> yeah, and then Tillman scores the goal that we talked about. Uh, that penalty was crazy because they could they had two penalty decisions. There was the one on the far side, which was actually a more clear-cut penalty. Yeah. Yeah. And they didn't call that. And the guy, the referee, just said, "I'll just you can get a penalty from this one." But they didn't even. I don't think they looked at the first one. But that was a penalty. I actually thought there might have been three on that play. <laughs> Honestly, I yeah, think, I think you're right. It was a mess. Nash was, was like, oh, "We're out. We're done." He's gonna blow this one. Oh, he didn't. He's maybe gonna check VR. And then there was another one right after. Okay, no, he's gonna blow this one. He didn't. And then finally, the third one. He was like, "All right, fine. I don't need to see VR. <laughs> one of these are definitely penalty." Yeah. So there were some good chances. Best left unsolved. You'll get your penalty. You're not going to get two penalties out yeah. of it. Denny Buwango, let's talk about him as he scored two. One was from that penalty. The other one he worked, the one that he hit off the crossbar, maybe his best effort, which wasn't the payoff. But he was flying. But I think it's important we to think of a player like this who was the MLS golden boot a year, and he scores goals in bunches. Yeah. People getting a little nervous. I think we all knew it would come. But I think that old adage, scoring the first one's always – maybe the trickier one. And he not only scored the first one and two, I get the feeling that we're going to start to see him get goals here and there. The, the, the double digits will come pretty quickly, but he had to get that first one under his belt. Yeah. I think if you weren't seeing chances, you'd be a little bit more nervous or a little more worrisome that, Hey, what's going on? But he was getting some chances, maybe unfortunate on some, maybe some good saves by keepers. This is the Vuong I think we're all used to, where you just see the ball go in the net, and he did it on multiple occasions. And so uh, it is good to see for an attacker. Sometimes that's all they need to see. Whether it's confidence or say whatever you want, once that ball goes in the net and they see that, it's like, okay, all right, floodgates open. Let's go. Now we're going to start scoring like crazy. It's great. It's great business. And I was, I mean, he was terrorizing people. I mean, I just wanted to, uh, by the way, Beta, what do you think of the glasses? Looks good. Why, I think, do you not like them? No, I, all my friends make fun of me. Why? But strangers at airports and stuff go, those are really nice because they're, they're nice. friends. That's what they do. They go, you look ridiculous. Yeah, that's what friends do. This lady good. next to me on the airplane was like, whoa, those are really good. She tried them on. I want to get a pair like this. Maybe because maybe they're, they, they, maybe these they are designer. Are they designer? No. Well, they huh? are. But they're kind of like disposable designer. These will break soon. I'll have to get in one. Anyway, oh, okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I wasn't looking for – I'm just trying to get to the bottom of this whole glasses thing because I'm stuck with them. Because You're I, just like, trying to see right now. You're trying to like – I just want to see. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, I want to talk about – I mean, Shaq Moore, Brent Colbin, those guys were getting stretched. I mean, yeah. they it, it looked like – I mean, all due respect, but some of those national players didn't – 
shouldn't have been on the field with uh, a guy like Buang. The way it, it, it must have, been, it has. You see what an ordeal it is, and how I know clubs around the league when they they get LFC, they're gonna be like, oh man, yeah, to face because it's an elite athlete and with good technical skills, and he just as the crow flies. The, the last thing that Shaq Moore wanted to do was concede two goals in the first half, and now have to expose yourself offensively and spread out and now leave all this vacant space behind you against someone like Bull. That's the last thing he wanted. Unfortunately, that's what happened. And so now, you know, you can hear on the audio, you hear Smith, their coach, <laughs> talking about, hey, fullbacks, let's get wide. We're down to nothing. Get higher. Uh, just to get into those good five spots offensively to give more options for the attackers. But when that happens – turn the ball over and now it's a track meet to get back you don't want to get in a track meet with Oliver or uh, Buanga I mean those are two very quick dynamic tricky players and so when you do that multiple times now you're not as sharp as you want to be they'd rather be in a lower block compact four or five people in the back line um, so it definitely went against their game plan and that's what happens uh, over the course of 90 minutes you're going to give up three four five goals so. yeah yeah. One thing, look, if LAFC can take a lead in a game, they're going to be unstoppable. Yeah. Uh, you don't always get that. Uh, but if they do, that's going to be very difficult for teams to catch up because they can start piling it on. Right. We touched a little bit about the defensive effort, but I want the importance of a clean sheet. You as a defender, yeah, uh, that's a collective effort. And for LAFC, it's not just defenders. It's the whole team, right? It's always like, well, this is how we all help out on the defensive effort. And yeah. it was set pieces were clean uh, defensively, uh, no real mistakes. And then, but what is it? And why are those clean sheets something that can carry you? Because you know, maybe con even con if you're part of a good defense, it's going to help you. Contract time across the board, clean yeah. sheets make a difference. Yeah. No, something about just getting a clean sheet, it always gives you a, a chance, opportunity to win the match. Right? If you don't give up a goal, you're always in that game. Um, as a defender, I would absolutely kill the person in front of me, whoever, whatever winger was, if they weren't working, if the game was three, four, five, nothing, and they just didn't care if we got scored. I'm like, no, like, listen, you got your goals. I want my clean sheet. Like, let's, <laughs> let's do this together, right? Let's cut a deal. Let's cut a deal. So uh, I, there was a play probably the 80-something minute, 88th, 87th minute, where the national kind of breaks through. And you see Hollingshead kind of make a last-ditch effort and clear the ball. And you could see. I, I was like, man, he cares. He really cares. He, he wants to keep that clean sheet. And that's what I love. Like, guys that, regardless of the score, you just want that clean sheet. Something about that. We always joke around the donut. You want to bring the donuts in on, on Sunday or Monday because you got the clean sheet. You you did that at LAC. They still do that. So someone brings the donuts. Did you ever have to bring the donuts in? Yeah. So I don't want to take credit for it, but uh, that was something that, you know, I did, we did it at Toronto and I brought it over to LAFC. So uh, then you should, then you should take credit for it. No, it's okay. I don't mind. I don't mind. Cause, cause I started, but this is big news before. beta. This is big news. We, we passed it on to player to player. So it wasn't at first it was me. And then, you know, it was like, all right, Jordan Walker, you know, Tyler. And then we started going up to midfielders cause we were getting a lot of clean sheets. So it's something that as a defender, we're proud of. Do you remember your go-to donut shop? If you yeah, got the donuts? You know, I'm trying to think of the name. There was one place right by my uh, by my house in, in Pasadena on the way to training. And so it was perfect. I would just go five minutes earlier than I usually do, stop by, pick up like, I don't know, two or three dozen, uh, and then just bring them in. And yeah. I would, I'd usually be around. I'd, I'd always try to be at training after a clean sheet because I knew and I'd get one of those last donuts. But they were very yeah. – they hit the spot. And if, you, if you're not in Los Angeles and you're listening to the podcast – the donut culture here is pretty crazy. I mean, it's and I know that's in cities, but of all the, the the sweet treats that you can get, donuts are at the top of the list. It's really competitive. Don't don't go cheap on starting a donut shop. You won't last. You've got to bring it. You got to have an idea, and you've yeah. got to have a good product. Yeah. I, so there are some fancy ones. We've done some appearances at different places. Oh, Lee Win, Lee Lee Win, and the Randy's donuts. The Randy's. <laughs> I'm going to have that on a black – I'm going to have Lee, hopefully, and we can have a black and gold rewind and talk about the Randy's yeah. donuts. So I wouldn't bring any fancy donuts like that, disclaimer, but I would bring some donuts in. Um, I think everyone enjoyed it. It's more of a camaraderie kind of thing. So. Right on. I'm glad they're people, still – People travel to L.A. 
and stop at Randy's at the Giant really? Donut. Really? Oh yeah, wow. there's always a huge line there. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Inglewood is, I mean, people, they, they go, you go to LA, I'm going to Disneyland, I'm going to go to the beach, and we're going to Inglewood to Randy's Donuts. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. I'm, but, I'm actually not too big of a donut guy, but it was more just... All right, conversation's over. It's nice talking to you, Beta. Yeah. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> I don't eat donuts. I have one on a blue moon. It's like 600 calories. Yeah. Gotta, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, they uh, every once in a while, it's okay, but I wasn't too big of a fan, but still brought them in. Are you excited for the Beta Cup this uh, weekend? <laughs> when the Rapids and LAFC meet forever so, this moving forward, it's the Beta Cup. We'll get a little trophy. Uh, my son has been watching, like, you know, I'm watching LAFC games. I'm watching Rapids games. And he loves to just, like, sit next to me and, like, you know, who's this? Who's that? Who are you rooting for? And so when I said, oh, my old team, because I say each one's my old team. And I said, no, next week, LAFC is going to come, come play the Rapids. And he goes, who are you rooting for? I was like, oh, look at you asking the tough questions. That is a tough uh, question. What was your answer? <laughs> I'm not saying you're yeah, right. No, Smart. I shouldn't ask you. We didn't have it. I want a good game. I want a good game. Uh, but it's it's going to be a fun match. I'll definitely – I'll probably be there. Um, I'll, I'll, I might take them. And so I was hoping to see you, but I heard you're not going to be there, which is sad. No, I'm a, I got a sign. I have some LAFC games coming up. Okay. I have a Red Bulls game and both Timbers games, so I'm excited about that. But uh, is it? Um, it's got to be good. Uh, it's got to be good for him. He probably gets to meet all the the Rapids players. Maybe get to meet some LFC players, and then yeah, you, yeah. you're developing that ex that excitement in your child for soccer. I missed the boat with my son. Does he does it doesn't register? Yeah. So unfortunately, the Rapids got rid of a lot of ah, that's experienced older players. New coach, uh, you know, new coach. So. There aren't a ton of players that he would know, but when he saw Lawless in the starting lineup, Lawless Abubakar, he got excited. He got ex he ran up to TV. I know that rapid. That's Lawless. And so my wife was like, "That was so cute. Can you please do that again?" Like took a little video. You have to send this to Lawless. So yeah, um, yeah. He he enjoys it. You know, some of the guys that he knows uh, when he sees them, whether it's Trusty or Mark Anthony K, like when. When they come over, he's like, oh, you're on TV. Like, he gets a kick out of it. So he definitely enjoys it. That's brilliant. Uh, so obviously that's changed a bit. Looking at the Rapids, I got to call one of their games uh, at Seattle where they did pretty well. I got to say, uh, uh, the the thing that I enjoyed the most about watching them is Cole Bassett's been putting in the work because this guy is talented. And I said he did really well. That was a former teammate of yours. Yeah. A lot of new players. Uh, they have Zach Steffen in goal, uh, Georgie Mihalovic, big high-profile number 10 that they're trying to get going. Uh, they have had a good start, but they lost at home. So they have back-to-back -back home games. Yep. And uh, it was to the Dynamo. So to, to Rapids, even though they've been struggling, but to lose back-to-back -back home games would be rare. Just from as a visitor to Colorado and someone playing at home, how does that advantage play uh, in, in part, or how does that manifest itself? Because we know about the altitude, and I know these are great athletes, but it, there's no shock that the Rapids and Rail Salt Lake – have good home records compared to other clubs. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I think we spoke briefly about it, about the altitude last time I was on here um, in Salt, Salt Lake. Lake yeah. and it's, you know, it's, it's a mile high up here. And so it is a factor. Um, obviously, everyone has a bit of a home field advantage. You've got your crowd behind you, the playing surface you're used to. Uh, you don't have to deal with the travel. All that goes into play. Uh, you know, you're at home sleeping in your own bed, comfy, and you're not at a hotel where maybe an uh, uncomfortable bed. There's so many circumstances that can affect how you play. But I think that biggest part for the Rapids are, is the altitude, honestly. Uh, it's a weird sensation when you're trying to run and you can't, you can't catch your second breath. You're like, why am I still – like, it feels like you're still in warm-up, trying to get in the rhythm of it and get going. Uh, and then in the second half, the Rapids, you know, you could just see that they look fresher. And teams tend to, to run out of gas in the second half. Uh, so it, it'll be interesting. There's different methods to it. Some teams say show up as late as possible and just play the game. Some people say if you want to get early, you have to show up like four or five days early, which is just not feasible, really, with how – how our you know schedule is <laughs> hey we're gonna <laughs> can you imagine steve trudlow hey we're not going to practice thursday friday we're going to head up on wednesday so we can get yeah. used to the altitude they have no choice right you got to go 
yeah. right before the game. Eat a lot of beets. Uh, I always go to the performance center, and there's a lot of beets, and they, they eat that for the altitude. They have so. the little uh, oxygen masks. Uh, no, I heard you're not supposed to do the oxygen because no. it, it's, it gives you it's uh, it's, it gives you false hope because eventually you have to adjust. Yes, really. It's yeah, that's what they tell you when you try and buy those little oxygen tanks up there. Go, just get used to it. I go, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll the see. weather says it's going to be okay, but obviously, last time the uh, LAFC went to this part of the world, they yeah. were they got three feet of snow. That says yeah. it's going to be 66 during the day, 37 during the night. But the, the issue is, and you live there, yeah. that weather rolls in and you just can't, you just don't, you can't expect it. The folks at Salt Lake couldn't expect it. I, I love the weather here. More often than not, it is blue skies and sunny, but it is also the most unpredictable weather of all the places I've lived. Like you can go out in shorts, it's hot, sunny, and then two, three hours later, all of a sudden, you have a thunderstorm or like it just starts snowing like yesterday it snowed the day before that it was 65 blue skies tomorrow 65 blue skies it's it's wild weather here um but yeah we'll see hopefully saturday it's clear and good weather Fingers let me up. ask you because I, I i'm always curious about this but as a player did how when did you know that you you're used to the thin air because you're playing in colorado you're like i'm used to it this is our i this is an advantage now my lungs are did so, you ever feel that that switch? It took me probably a month uh, to, of living there to of get living there, like to finally feel like okay, now it's an advantage for me. That first month, man, just training with these guys every day, I was like, like how? Like I'm fit, but how am I just like I feel like I can't run? And then you know you walk up. At the time, uh, the first month I was here, I was in an apartment, so I'd walk up some of the stairs because I was only on the third floor. And so I'd walk up three flights, and I was gassed by the time I got to my my room. I'm like, whew, what's going on here? Uh, so it, it probably took a month. I lost you. Sorry, I had... Sorry, Beta. I had the mute button on because there was some uh, peripheral noise here. This was I know. I was saying sometimes I hit the treadmill in the hotel and I'm running and uh, I feel it right away. But anyway, I, I've always wanted to ask that question to see when that when the when it switches. And yeah. then when you come back to sea level, you're like, oh, flying. So yeah. is it a bigger advantage when you're? I mean, maybe a Colorado player should have a better road advantage because there's. <laughs> you think they would because it definitely is an advantage. Uh, a lot of people come altitude training it's a thing uh where you think about it we live here all the time we play our games and then you go one day go play a game against whoever you should have an advantage but you know i don't know their home record or their away record isn't as phenomenal as you would think with this advantage yeah see it's all wrong uh i like to go to altitude just so that feeling when i come back and i'm like oh i can take on the world right. it feels great. good yeah beta are you ready for the most popular segment of inside lafc podcast i am i love it it's great black and gold rewind i reach out to beta before i go what games can we do because you know I, his memory is a lot better than mine athletes in general have fantastic memories they can tell you every detail that's why this is such a fun segment because you'll remember every detail although this is one i remember and yeah. anyone who's at that stadium will remember it was october 12 2018 year one of lafc the rain game versus houston yeah. Where it rained. Did you think they were th any minute that that might get canceled? Because it, I mean, there was no rain in LA for months, no. and then that day it, it rained for a year almost. It was beautiful that entire year. Every home game, uh, we had never had delays, no cancellations, no nothing. And start the game against Houston, we're fine, and then it starts trickling down, and then it just starts pouring, like pouring, and. There was a moment I was like, they might call the game. And I wish they did because uh, Houston scored when it was the monsoon coming down. And I was like, they called it right after that. I was like, you couldn't have called it five minutes earlier. It was such a sloppy goal they scored. I remember it was like ricocheting around in the box. People were sliding and slipping all over the place. Uh, but that, that, that break definitely helped us. Uh, I don't know how much you want me to go into detail about it, but uh, – Unmute again. Do <laughs> you know what happened when uh, the uh, 
when you guys went into the locker room, what happened in the stadium? They told people to, they told people to uh, take cover, and then they yeah. really didn't. And then they stayed in their seats for the most part. Some people were on the concourse. Yeah. And then it was the National League Division Series. The Dodgers were playing the Brewers, and they put the game. Al Raid, who was at uh, stadium controls there, on the big on the big screen, and everyone was watching it, cheering for the Dodgers in the rain, and people were dancing and carrying on. It yeah. was a party, man. It yeah. was a party. So we, when we were in the locker, there's a there's a protocol that they have. I think it's like you have to wait 30 minutes after lightning strike. And so we knew we were going to be there at least 30 minutes. I don't know how long we ended up staying. I think it was around 45 to an hour. Uh, but we heard the 3252 were outside, and they were singing. And we're like, man, it's been it's been a while. Like. Let's go. Let's go check it out. And some of us went out and like look, and sure enough, they're all out there in the pouring rain, uh, just having time of their life. We're like, man, that's so cool. So we go back inside. We're trying to kind of just mellow out. You want to save your energy because you don't know how long you're going to be in there for. I've I've had some rain delays uh, because of lightning for three hours. So I've had games that got canceled because you waited so long. It, it was like yeah. two in the morning. And so after we, a while, there's a limit. They go, they don't get this game. I think they even mentioned that for this game because there was two lengthy delays. And they said, if you don't get it kicked off by whatever yeah. nine something, yeah, it's not happening. And so when we finally came out and we saw them all still there, we were just like, okay, like now they did their part. Now we, we got to do our part. And that was such a boost, man. We came out flying because of that. Like, but that's crazy because you guys were down a goal. Yeah, and then it just went bonkers for LAFC. It was ended up four two. That was my one of my favorite games. And yeah. Carlos had this great little chip goal at the end oh, yeah. that was just unbelievable. But it was one zip. It was like the thirty fifth minute. By yeah. the end of the game, LAFC had not only come back but dominated. Yeah, one of their best second halves. This was remember this is the end of two thousand eighteen. So you're getting ready for the playoffs. Yeah. That had to be a big lift. Yeah, well, that was the whole thing because it was you know I think that was like two or three games before the playoffs started we wanted to get into good rhythm especially at home uh and we we weren't playing well up until that point whether it was the rain or what and we were we were pretty upset with ourselves and that rain and seeing the fans still there it really gave us that lift and we came out flying on all cylinders it was a weird night because you know carlos did have that right-footed chip which he never scores with the right foot uh i think walker that was the game where he had the the volley yes. So he scored a lot of header on corners, but now he's scoring with his feet. We're just like, what's going on? And that was the game where him and I like chest bumped. I remember it was porn. It was like, this is so cool. Like it was fun. It was a fun night. I won't remember that. I won't forget that one. Oh, me neither. And I, 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 it's one of those games where I remember all the details. I was calling it for our local TV package. It was Ian Joy was my plus one, and we had a. We were just thrilled to be there. And the funny thing is, I think that the 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 game, the corresponding game that you played in Houston that year also lengthy rain delay or lightning delay it was crazy weather both dynamo lafc games was uh, that the open cup game that went to penalties or was no i think it was a it was a it was a early, regular season game that was earlier in the year what yes was that, june june ish correct yeah and crazy houston weather there's crazy yeah. weather all over our country we like to see so yeah. that it's the reality so <laughs> um, mauro manota scored 33rd minute the game stopped 35th minute yeah. vela scored right at the end of the you played a mini 10 minute game. He scored in the 44th. Yep. Dio 53. Zimmerman 58th. Yep. And then Carlos Vela with yep. the goal, the best goal. You got to watch it back. Pull it up on 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 uh, online. That was in the 78th minute. It was 4 1. Houston got one 4 2. Yeah. But we won't yeah, forget the rain. One, uh, Diego went through kind of on a breakaway with the heavy touch. Yes. And the keeper makes a save. Yeah. Yep. And it deflected back to, to Carlos. Back. Carlos just oh. with the right foot. Yeah. Good memories, man. It was good times. It was, it, it was one of those games where you felt like a kid out there. You know, every once in a while you have those games where in the rain, you're running around, the, the fans are just cheering you on. Like, they're still there no matter what. You you felt like that that game felt like you were just a kid just having fun. And you crazy. could throw in a couple slide tackles in that rain. Like, it was, it a little was, hydro, it was hydro plane. It was fun to slide tackle for that game, for sure. <laughs> Oh, we love it. Black and gold rewind. Looking back at the game from 2018 against the Dino. Anyone who was there will remember it. Uh, we got probably the rain the only day of 2018. It might have been the case. We, yeah. were, we were in a drought. We were in a drought. So that came out. Yeah. 
So great to share that. Thanks for sharing that as well, Beta. Uh, and always great to, to talk to you on Inside LFC Podcast. We'll uh, we'll see you here in a little bit. And uh, enjoy the Beta Cup. We'll get a trophy and we'll, we'll engrave it and we'll move on from there. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm going to miss you. I wish you were here, but hopefully next time uh, we get to see you. But I will be going to the game, so... I'll be, I'll be rooting. I'll be rooting. Yeah, if you're an LAFC traveling supporter, go hi, go say hi to Beta. He'll be yeah, there. I'll, I'll go see them. They travel well. I'm going to go see they them. They do. Yeah. It's a short trip. Direct flight. You can be there in no time. Perfect. Inside LAFC podcast will continue. Timothy Tillman, LAFC midfielder, goal scorer over the weekend, joins us next here on Inside LAFC. We welcome you back to Inside LAFC Podcast. We are joined by LAFC midfielder Timothy Tillman. As always, we want to get to know Timothy a little bit better, but we got to talk about the game this week, and that had to feel good, right? Five goals, 27 shots. You had that first goal, too. When, when you have struggled scoring, what's it like to have a game like that? Yeah, I think it's like a big confidence boost for all of us. Uh, we just needed that, kind of. Um, yeah, we're just super happy right now, in a good mood, and we just hope to continue like that. Take us through your goal. That was the one that was off the corner kick. Aaron got his header to it, and you were in the right position. I see you smiling already because that, that's positioning's a big part of all of this. You, 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 you have to know kind of where to be to where you can tuck in a rebound like that. Yes, of course. I mean, uh, we always train set pieces before games. Um, this time it was just my job to be right there. Uh, I got lucky because the ball just dropped in front of me, and it was probably the easiest goals, uh, easiest goal I scored in my life. But it felt amazing still, and I'm just super happy to have the team like that. Two goals this season. What? Do you have a target in mind? Denis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. You've got as many as Denis right now, so you're. <laughs> no, but that's gonna be like 15, 20. Well, maybe we'll see. Yeah, but of course, I just, I just want to help the team. I want to improve my stats um, and do as much as I can to help the team. Uh, so far, I'm trying my best, and we'll see how it continues. Well, you're doing wonderfully, Timothy, and uh, just with that goal. Your your responsibility. The ball comes in. Is that for you to kind of drop off to where the where that near post was to see if you're anticipating a rebound? Yeah, I don't know if I can go too much into it now. Um, we don't want to reveal all the tactics. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I just I just had had to yeah be in the space right there, and I got lucky, and we'll see what happens next weekend. We'll be watching. We'll be watching. Uh, that, of course, playing against the Colorado Rapids. You have played 444 minutes of 450. So almost the entire stretch for LAFC. It, how does that help a player where you've started all five games and you, you've logged these minutes, not to mention you've got a full week to train on what you're going to do? How has that helped your game? Yeah, I think it just helps, especially in the beginning of the season, to create some sort of flow. Of course, if the if the results would have been a little better, then it would be even easier. But also this way, if you're just in the team, you know, okay, this guy is doing that at that uh, at this time, and if he does that, I have to do this. And yeah, you just get into like your patterns, and yeah, that's what I think helps helps the most. Um, other than that, it's just important to get minutes. It's, it's always always nice, especially playing at home, but also just to get minutes with my teammates. I mean, I can say they're all my friends, and I just enjoy being, being with them on the field and working together with them. Brilliant. And with the midfield, you have been able to start all five games with Ilya, and you have been able to start with Eduard Atuesta. You knew what Ilya could do, and now you're, you're playing with Eduard for the first time. What are some things that uh, you have you've been working on and you've seen that you've been able to execute with that midfield? I think we we have a really good passing in our midfield. Um, uh, in my opinion, or I think the most important thing for us right now is to to stay connected, to find find the gaps or find the passes between ourselves in the midfield. 
Um, I think we did a pretty good job this weekend on that. And if we can do so in the next games, it will help us a lot. What is it with, what have you learned about playing with Edward? Yeah, he's, he's an amazing passer. Like his passing is really, really good. And yeah, he's just, he's just very good in possession and can help us a lot with the ball going forward. Uh, getting the ball from one side to another or from the back to the front line. And yeah, he's also just a nice guy off the pitch, always in a good mood and good for the team, of course. You guys have the Colorado Rapids up next. Uh, last time you went to the mountain time zone, you had three feet of snow. I don't know. I can't tell you won't get this. I can't tell you will either. You might. <laughs> Are you the altitude? This is something we talked with uh, our co-host Beta here. Is something that that you have to be prepared for playing at sea level and knowing that that's going to be a bit of a challenge. Yeah, I still remember the first time going there. The altitude was was killing me. Uh, I really had to get used to that, but I won't be surprised that much this time. Um, but other than that, I just hope it won't be snowing. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, it's, it's, it's about the work, work again. I think we, we ran a lot also. It was just, it wasn't just the, uh, the, the time with the ball or the, the playing with the ball in the last game. It was also the work against the ball that was just very good and made it difficult for the opponents. So yeah, we just have to try to do do a good job against the ball, especially going or playing away from home. That's what has to come first. And yeah, then then we'll just hope for a better weather than in Salt Lake. Yeah. You enjoy the snow. You just don't want to play in it, so to speak. But maybe if you were on vacation, the snow, it's, it's all nice. Exactly. <laughs> I understand your uh, that your your mom was in town. I know you guys are very close, you and your brother as well. Um, uh, for being so far away from home, what's it mean for mom to be there? What are the good thing? What are the good things you get to do? Yeah, we're just enjoying the time together. Um, we don't even need to do that much because she she saw a lot from LA last time she was here. So yeah, we're just spending some time together, having some good talks, and eating some good food as always. And yeah, that's that's what it's about right now. Where did you take her last time that you you were able to show her the city? What were the places you wanted to take her? Honestly, she just hopped on a sightseeing bus, and <laughs> then then she told me then she told me where she wants to go back again, and then we just went there. She wanted to go back to Venice Beach once. She wanted to to go to the to the Hollywood sign, or I took her then to Griffith Observatory. And yeah, then we just went to some nice restaurants. Have you done a hike up at there at Ran Runyon Canyon or? That would have been too much. <laughs> well, I know, but you, maybe when we, you can go with, the, with some of the teammates, yeah. a little. Yeah, I know, I know, but I think I was a little too lazy that time to do the hike <laughs> up there. Those sightseeing buses, I mean, people kind of go, oh, well, because like, when I go to Europe, I jump on one of those sightseeing buses and you see everything. Uh, yeah. You have to deal with the LA traffic though. Yeah, that's the only problem coming with it. But yeah, she also likes it. I, I mean, I rather explore cities by myself, just walking through whatever. But everyone's different. How much of the city have you seen? You think now you've been here a couple of years. How much have you been able to enjoy? You feel more comfortable when you're when you're in LA? Yeah, for sure. That's what my mom also told me yesterday when we had dinner. She was like, "It's so crazy how how well you adapted to the city and how." Well, you know everything. Um, I think I did a good job on it, and everyone just helped me a lot on that. So, yeah, I'm feeling very comfortable around LA. Something that you did do uh, with mom was to go see uh, brother Malik or Malik yes. uh, play for the US national team. Right. So, uh, he, did you get to spend some time with him before or after the game? Yeah, we left uh, right away from our game because uh, we had a day off on Sunday. So we flew there over the night, came there or arrived in the morning at 5 a.m. in Dallas. Then I had to catch up some sleep. Um, and then in the afternoon, we were able to go to the, to, the t to the team hotel in Dallas. 
spoke a little bit to my brother, spent some time with him before the game. And then, yeah, it was a was an exciting game. It was just very nice to be to be in the same place with my mom and my brother. And after the game, of course, there was a, was a reason to celebrate. So we went back to the hotel, celebrated a little bit, and then I had to get back to LA. How often do you get with mom and your brother? Because this, you're, again, playing in LA, your your brother plays in the Netherlands, your mom's in Germany, correct? Yes. So how often, maybe a year, do you get to be all three together? Last year was just once for the Christmas, wow. Christmas time a little bit. So yeah, every time we, we get together or we could make it even happen, like it wasn't it wasn't easy to, to get to Dallas after the game and going back and all this stuff. But every time there's there's the possibility, I think we we take it. You got the call up for the U.S. men's national team in the January camp. I, I am sure um, you're still in the mix. I had a nice performance and in, um, in competition to be in the midfield. What would it mean to get a call up with Malik on the same squad representing the United States? I think it would be a dream come true. Um, yeah, just a very nice feeling and an honor, of course. Uh, I had the honor to play for the U.S. once, and I'd be honored to do every single time again. And yeah, I'll try my best to do so. And uh, have you ever talked about that with your brother about, hey, if we could be on the field together and you could hit me, I could go through, I could get off one of those set piece goals? Of course, yeah. I think every time, every time we get the mail of, of the preliminary rosters we're like yeah are you on it of course yeah am i on it yes i am and then we we speak about it and we just talk about it and say yeah it would be so nice if we get together there were you you were on the the, the preliminary roster for march the march roster yes so that's great man you're you're in the mix yes i you get the converse you don't have to tell me what they say but you get conversations from greg berhalter and some of the u.s soccer folks just checking yeah. in on you of course, uh, when I when I came to the team hotel, I met all of the guys. Uh, so. Smart, <laughs> spend some time. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, so I spoke a little bit to everyone. It was nice to see all of them again. And as I said, I'd be happy to represent the U.S. again. You guys, you might be the best American brother tandem. I'm trying to think of some other ones. I think the the, the McAllister brothers. There's like five McAllister brothers. Alexis plays for Liverpool, but there's a few. You're up there as brother tandems. The Tillmans yeah. are near the top. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's true. Yeah. Uh, by the way, you did mention you know, when you got there, you like to sleep. And when we were in Salt Lake, when Steve Trundolo said the game was being postponed, he said the players are going back to get your rest. How much sleep does a, the soccer players get? Because I get the feeling you guys you guys get a lot. It helps you for your. Uh, for your games yeah i think it's I, I think sleep is just very important for recovery uh especially when you're traveling away from home it's just important to uh, to get some good sleep um but yeah normally i'm trying to sleep like eight hours a day i'm an eight hour guy too timothy yeah don't feel bad about that nah. so <laughs> could you put in more could you go and get 10 i could i could sleep a lot i i don't have any problem <laughs> sleeping <laughs> Yeah, right. we're. I'm right on board with you on that one. Yeah. Uh, and when you're, when you were mentioning having some good food, and there we have a feature on uh, LAFC Weekly that I saw where we get to know you a little better, and you say you like to cook. So uh, have you come up with some new stuff? One of the things you said you like it simple and quick and delicious. So, yes. what? Anything new that you have been working on at home? Uh, the other day I made. In Germany, we call them spring rolls, but it's not the not the fried ones, but the ones just with rice paper, you know? Oh, nice. That's what I made myself the first time. So, yeah. So you just go, I'm going to try something. I'm going to try and, yes, and I'll, I'll experiment. Yeah, most of the looks. time I'm just looking up recipes on the internet, like on YouTube or TikTok, to be honest. And then I'm like, okay, yeah, this this looks nice. This looks easy. This looks delicious. <laughs> Let's do it. We got to get you on Beat Bobby Flay on one of these uh, cooking shows. That would yeah. be 
Have you, how often do you eat, you cook something you say it came out really well compared to how many times you cook something and say, uh, I won't make that again? Yeah, I think sometimes you just have to admit that the first time you try to cook something, it won't be the best, but then you know better for the next time. So you're just increasing and improving every single time you cook it. Um, so I think it's about that, just learning from what you were doing. And yeah, so I'd say like, I think everything I cook is at least eatable. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Hey, well, Timothy, it's great to talk with you. And I got to say, every time we get to converse, you're so much more comfortable. And that I, that you know fills us with joy because it means you're comfortable here with the club and in the city. So uh, it's excellent. By the way, have you guys started to think, we have your rapids. Are there any thoughts about Galaxy Week coming up? No, I think no. <laughs> right now, especially because of the last game, um, it's just important to, to prove that it wasn't just lucky that we beat Nashville. Um, so, yeah, we just have to focus on the next game and then the Galaxy comes after. Build. Winning streaks. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Timothy, great to chat with you, man. Thanks for joining us here on Inside LAFC Podcast. Hope to do it again soon. Thank you so much. It was nice talking to you. Oh, brilliant. Timothy Tillman joining us here. And we want to thank Beta as well as we get ready for the Rapids game. We'll be back next week to preview that and get you ready for Galaxy Week. Make sure you rate, review, download, subscribe, tell a friend. This is Max. We'll see you next time.